How's it going, guys? Past level question, pharmacology, step one, internal medicine, 2CK. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give you a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, mailman underscore medical, and MHL, man underscore medical. Links down below for me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group channel down below. Now start the clip. 59 year old man has four month history of pain in his buttocks and thighs when he walks more than a block. Clearly intermittent claudication. In additional lifestyle modifications, the physician considers adding a drug to his patient's regimen that is both vasodilatory and antiplatelet effects. Which the following pharmacologic agents most likely to be prescribed to this patient. So, as I said, past level, it's just do you know basic mechanisms of action? Let's just whip the dance choice here. Choice A, abcixamab, wrong fucking answer. So, monoclonal antibody against glycoproteins 2B, 3A, and platelets decreases platelet aggregation. Uh, you assembly could mention it as a fibrinogen analog, which might sound a little bit weird, but well, we have physiologically fibrinogen that will normally bridge glycoproteins 2B3 and platelets. So if it's a monoclonal antibody that uh, can bind to those same receptors, then it's a fibrinogen analog. I haven't seen USMLA really give a fuck. Okay, abcixamab, it's more just like textbook stuff. You could know that another uh, similar sounding drug, adalimumab, is an anti-TNF-alpha agent, okay? Binds soluble TNF-alpha. So infliximab, adalimumab, are monoclonal antibodies against TNF-alpha. Don't confuse with etanercept, which is a recumbent receptor that will mop up soluble TNF-alpha. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, aspirin, wrong fucking answer. So obviously aspirin is an antiplatelet agent, inhibits COX, okay, irreversibly. And that'll decrease not just prostaglandin synthesis, but thromboxane E2, decreasing platelet function. Uh, platelet count will not drop. It's just bleeding time that's going to increase. So you say, well, what about the vasodilatory effects? Well, if aspirin's knocking out prostaglandin synthesis, prostaglandins are vasodilatory, then as a result, we will get decreased vasodilation of vessels with aspirin, right? I mean, this is the whole concept behind decreased renal blood flow uh, with decreased synthesis of vasodilating prostaglandins of the afferent arterioles and answer on one of the NVMe exams, okay? So it's a long discussion, but point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, salacetyl, correct answer. So salacetyl and dipyridamol are both drugs. You need to know they're phosphodiesterase inhibitors that are going to both vasodilate arterioles as well as they have antiplatelet effects. Okay, that's literally just what the US simile is going to do straight up. Okay, straight up. You're just going to, you'll get to your exam, you're going to get some question and they're just going to say, Patients given a drug that's both a vasodilator and antiplate agent, and they can have either salostazole as the correct answer, like we have here, or it can be a different question where it's just dipyridamol, salostazole is not listed. So you need to know those two drugs, they're vasodilators of arterials, and they also have antiplatelet effects, okay? Salostazole is the buzzy slash classic one for intermittent claudication, although the caveat I issue is that for TCK questions, it's basically always a wrong fucking answer nine out of 10 times. It's a long discussion, okay? But when we talk about arterial disease, patients of intermittent claudication, you're gonna do ankle brachial indices, ABIs, first step in diagnosis, and then after, you're going to recommend an exercise stress test to determine exercise tolerance, then you're going to recommend a walking slash exercise program as the first step in treatment. Salacizole is the first step in treatment is a wrong fucking answer, okay? You only bring in salacizole after the patient is already on a walking slash exercise regimen and is not uh, having any improvement in the intermittent claudication. But if they force you to choose a drug for intermittent claudication, salacizole tends to be used. Dipyridamol, that's more for stress testing, uh, pharmacologic stress testing, dipyridamol thallium, where if you're vasodilating, you're going to cause a drop in blood pressure, decrease afterload in the heart, so heart rate goes up to compensate, okay? And that can be used for pharmacologic stress testing, as I said, with thallium. <clears throat> Real quick, clopidogrel, wrong fucking answer. So antiplate agent binds to ADP2Y12 uh, receptors on platelets, okay? So inhibits platelet function. Clopidogrel, you can hear about this as very buzzy for things like could be used for stenting procedures. I haven't seen you assembly give a fuck about that. Okay, that just tends to be perpetuating resources. You could be aware for carotid stenosis, right? That uh, patients who are under the endarterectomy threshold, 70% symptomatic, 80% uh, asymptomatic for uh, carotid atherosclerosis. Uh, and that's, of course, 2CK stuff. But patients who are under those thresholds, rather than getting endarterectomy, they're going to get a triad of number one, ACE inhibitor or ARB, classically with Sinopril, you assembly really likes, number two is statin. And number three, antiplatelet therapy, where it can be aspirin alone. I've seen that as standard for 2CK. Uh, or they can have aspirin and dipyridamol combo or just clopidogrel alone. Okay, so there's other use cases for it. US simile doesn't obsess. They just want you to know that clopidogrel uh, as an antiplatelet agent binds to ADP2Y12 receptors. 
Okay, ADP receptors on platelets. And also finally, I'll just quickly mention that uh, when a patient has a myocardial infarction, uh, the first drug you're gonna give is aspirin, followed by when paramedics arrive, you give dual antiplatelet therapy classically with clopidogrel. Wrong fucking answer. Choice the hydrology, wrong fucking answer. So this is a vasodilator of arterioles. Uh, this has a bit of an obscure mechanism. USMLE doesn't ask, uh, which is going to affect calcium currents. Uh, in smooth muscle in the arterioles. Not, it's not a calcium channel blocker, but it affects calcium currents. As I said, I haven't seen USMLE really care about the mechanism. What they do want you to know merely is that it vasodilates arterioles. That's what they want you to know. And it can be used for hypertensive emergencies in pregnancy. And they, all, they also can use hydralazine occasionally for baroreceptor reflex type mechanisms where if you give hydralazine, which is a vaso, an arterial or dilator, then heart rate's going to go up to compensate. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.